A skin patch that uses sensors and AI to check on how well wounds are healing has been developed by a joint NUS and A-Star research team. Now, the sensor patch is called Petals, and it looks like a five-petaled flower. Each petal is a sensing region that tracks different biomarkers like temperature and pH. The center opening collects fluid from the wound and distributes it to these sensors. After 15 minutes, a photo of the patch can be analyzed by an AI program. And so far, it's been highly accurate at telling the health of a wound in experiments. And for more on this, we speak next to Associate Professor Benjamin T. He's Principal Investigator from NUS and Dr. Su Xiaodi. She's Principal Scientist from ASTAR. Welcome to both of you and thank you for joining us this thank evening. Thank you, happy to be here. Uh, Associate Professor T, let's begin with you. What exactly is happening when the AI is scanning a photo of this patch? Sure, let me just quickly take a step back on why we started this in the first place. By the time you are in your 70s, you are three times more likely to suffer from some kind of chronic wound like diabe diabe diabetic wounds than in your 30s. To meet this growing need, especially as uh, due to elderly, yeah, increase our population. We developed a paper thin sensor patch we call PATLES that essentially allows clinicians or nurses to very quickly determine if these wounds are healing uh, properly. All they, all they have to do is simply take a smartphone, take a photo of the patch, and then what happens is that these color changes are captured by the sensors we embed in this system we call PATLES. And we can tell if the wound is healing well or not with accuracies as high as 97%. Mm, that's right. incredible, 97%. And I'm wondering, aside from diabetics, as you've mentioned, who greatly benefit from this patch, um, what about uh, the others? I mean, you know, what sort of wounds are we looking at? Is it like just, you know, like a, a simple cut or we're we talking about something, you know, a little bit more um, serious? I think it's a great question. I think there are many kinds of wounds. Uh, I think the ch most challenging type of wounds are burn wounds mm. uh, from burn victims or diabetic wounds that kind of need intervention to heal or advance the healing process. And so that's what we are trying to do, is to help clinicians determine as early as possible when we should intervene to make sure the wound is healing, ideally scar-free. Mm. Uh, Dr. Su, let's bring you in on the conversation here. What were the challenges when it came to developing uh, this actual membrane that is the this, this sort of like the basis of, of this? Sure. Uh, this is the first time that our team uh, managed to integrate five different markers or wound condition indicators into one paper patch. So the challenge here is that uh, each of the sensor uh, materials are based on different material and based on different sensing principle. So the challenge here is how to integrate all these five different sensors into one single paper patch. So our team has done lots of uh, optimization to make sure that the, each sensor has been uh, functional in this uh, integrated sensor patch. And in our conversation earlier, you mentioned it took three years just to you know, come up with this patch, and even then it's still on a trial stage. So I'm wondering, in terms of uh, the, the challenges of, of trying to you know, put this all uh, together, uh, if you could enlighten us, you know, what was the biggest one? I guess, uh, first of all, uh, in order to design this sensor to be useful in clinical setting, we have to uh, study a lot about the, what is the current uh, unmet need in the hospital. So that from there, we identify uh, different uh, wound biomarkers, which can be indicative of different stage of the wound healing status. So by integrating them together, we will be able to provide more holistic, effective, and uh, accurate assessment by combining with the AI uh, algorithm. Yeah. That's right. I think the other challenge is that we wanted something that could be easily integrated in existing wound dressing technology, like a cotton. And so that's why we developed something that's battery free. It, it's essentially a self-powered system that simply changes color. And using speci specially designed AI algorithms, they're very good at detecting these color changes. And we can very accurately, accurately tell whether the wound is progressing uh, in terms of the healing or not, whether it's infected. Mm. And we can do so without having to remove the dressing. Yeah. Right, so theoretically what happens is you have the wound, you place the patch on, and you'll have a normal dressing as per normal, depending right. on, on the severity of the wound, as it were. And, it, you know, it, it's not going to replace 
the actual process that doctors may go through when they're checking mm -hmm. on a wound, but essentially it makes it more accurate? Is that, is that yeah. the goal here? It, it makes it easier for them to determine if the yeah. wound is infected or not without having to remove the dressing, which can mm. cause pain, especially as this dressing sometimes sticks to the wound, especially over, over a large area of wound. But what about with the actual cleansing or cleaning of the wound as well? Because yeah. you know, when you have particularly severe skin injuries, mm -hmm you will have that long process of actually sanitizing the air and so on. Can the, will the patch still be used during that process? Yeah, so the patch essentially goes on to the new dressing that's used after the cleaning process. Right, okay. Yeah. And I'm going to ask you about the cost though. I mean, it seems yeah. quite expensive uh, or rather the impression is, right. is, you know, so can you just give us an idea when it actually comes to market, you know, what sort of costs will be involved? Yeah. Uh, we believe that this is a low-cost uh, technology because in one simple paper-based sensor patch, we have five different uh, indicators integrated. So these five parameters traditionally will rely on laboratory-based technology. For instance, the infection detection requires bacterial culture, sending the sample to the lab setting. Uh, it will take a uh, very long time and also take lots of uh, the uh, facilities. So this integrated miniaturize the sensor will potentially provide a low-cost wound care and wound management. Mm. So again, theoretically, it would be one patch mm -hmm. per sort of injury yep. that stays with you as your wound is healing. And how would you envisage this to be actually sort of commercialized and sold? I mean, would it be, is it something that you expect to be on the shelves or again, only at the clinic level? Yeah, I think we want to start with, you know, uh, large categories of wounds like chronic wounds or diabetic wounds. And, you know, the, the total wound, the bandage market, for example, is $10 billion. I think a small fraction of what we can do would be to help patients that, you know, need actually uh, quickly recovering wounds to, to, to basically have this technology. And then slowly we'll proliferate across, hopefully, in the future, even if you have a small cut, you can use our technology and have a cut scar-free healing. I think that's sort of long-term goal. So I guess uh, just before we let you go, just one question very, uh, just very quickly. So when, when can we expect to see this um, out in the market? Yeah, well, we, we definitely, uh, you know, we're very excited about doing trials now with uh, clinicians and we expect maybe in three years or so we might see some, uh, you know, commercial uptake. <laughs> wow, six years in total sounds like just to get it out there. <laughs> well, it has high impact. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's a fantastic uh, development. Thank you so much for coming into the studios to share more about this AI patch for yep. wound healing. And we wish you the very best as well with the uh, continued development of, of this. Thank you, Associate Professor Benjamin Tive, Principal Investigator from NUS, and Dr. Su Xiaodi, Principal Scientist from ASTAR.